Okay, here we are at the Anoka County Airport in Try to get in. Minnesota. You know, I've never actually had that problem in Florida. We usually don't have because we've got somebody who takes care of that. This is going to come on for a few minutes. Oh, that's okay. Cool. I have not been here since a very long time. I flew my Stinson Tri-Motor over from Oshkosh when I picked it up. Oh, yeah. Greg had a Stinson Tri-Motor, so we ended up flying, uh, flying together. together. That's right. It's the first time probably in a long time, and we ended up uh, going down the Missouri or one of the rivers and got some great photos. And That was a great time. So anyway, so that's the last time I was here. So we're going to get a little tour of Greg. Uh, Greg's hanger. So the light's coming up now. So light's coming up. Ooh, this is a cool one. Yeah, Although it's missed. We had the engine off. We found some metal in that. We we're doing the annual, so we're going to get that fixed this winter. Awesome. You've seen this airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had it down at my place, I think, and oh, that's right. you were having an overheating so problem or something yeah, like yeah. that. Are those 450s? No, 300s? 300s. Yeah, okay. Same as on the high that I have. You're hiring a big like I mean, two fifteens. Oh, on this, on what? The, uh, on on your uh, Stinson. No, three hundred likes. Oh, are they three hundreds also? Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Did you put those on there? Uh, came with it. That's what. Oh, uh, is that what they had? Yeah, that's what. Uh, this is a cool plane. Open the cockpit. I don't know how much you can see in here, but. Video cameras tend to suck light out of the air, so. Oh, this is too cool. This is really nice, Greg. It's kind of a nice machine to cruise around in. At 165 miles an hour. Whoa, that is moving. Yeah. Watch your step here, Grimmett. Yeah. They had on the uh, logo, America's Fastest Tri Motor. I'll be damned, that's pretty cool. Is Faster than any of my Tri Motors. <laughs> was the last piston, you know, Tri Motor built. I mean, if you don't kind of twin huh. islander or something like that. All right, that's the one that we flew with. That's the Stinson Tri Motor. America's oldest flying airliner. Over a million miles and 150,000 pounds. That's of awesome. Huh. Cool. All these pictures of the airplanes when they were in service. This is the uh, Stinson A, the low wing in service in Chicago. Hmm. got different landing gear on it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are, that's the, uh, that's the uh, what do you call it, the vertical takeoff and landing gear. We're experimenting. Yeah, Greg borrowed my landing gear for a, a very long time. Yeah, Kermit was very gracious. Off my four, which is being rebuilt in Kalamazoo. God, this thing is so shiny. So that's putting the new, your new gear on. Yep. Unbelievably. Like that, we've got a picture of geometry, actually. We're fixing the geometry on the um, struts because the new gear is higher than, than the bungee gear. The, the gear that you gave me was on 1077. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. By the way, oh, this is the... This is the new one. The this is the new one, the aerobatic one, okay. Okay, this is the one that had my landing gear on it. Yeah. This is the four. So they had to make brand new landing gear and... Brand new landing gear. And uh, we're uh, getting the wheels and brakes approved. All this stuff has to be reapproved from the FAA. Hmm. 
There's skis for it. Now this is the oldest flying metal airplane in the world when it's flying. Really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, another project. <laughs> oh yeah. This is one of those, uh, was it Gene Frank airplanes? Yes. Uh, no, this is the last Aviation Heritage Museum. Oh actually. really? Skis, that is too cool. Skis for the boy. Here, uh, Kermit, let me, uh, Oh, awesome. I got to make one. This is the toilet. That's awesome. I need one for mine. That is too cool. Huh. Don't ask me what's stuck down in there. I don't know. <laughs> we won't go there. God. This is really nice. How much do you have to polish these things? Never been polished. You're kidding. This is the airplane we used when we did the Amelia flight. This is the gear that we took off. Right. That's what you copied off. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, we had this. Okay. Your gear was this kind of a gear with the uh, hydraulic. Oh, uh, on the cylinders. four. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But and I've got this on my five. These don't didn't give us enough. Give us well, any any flexibility at all. They're hard as a rock. Huh. Mine seems to work okay, but then again, I'll make smooth landings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a beginner. This is really cool. Avro Avion. Like this you said, is, they... Uh, Billy Earhart uh, made her first record flight in an Avro Avion, and uh, we recreated that flight. She, uh, in 2001, she flew from Rye, New York to uh, California and back, and we hmm. recreated that flight in this airplane which was when I bought it, the oldest flying airplane in Australia. Oh my God. I went to Australia and bought the airplane. I can't believe they let it go. No, I couldn't either. I brought it back here huh. and repainted it like Amelia's. It was made in the same factory Amelia's was, was made in, but uh, three weeks before. Huh. And now I've been contacted by a, a movie company. They're gonna make a movie called, they said, hey, we'd like to borrow, use the Avon in hmm. Africa. Oh, what's the name of the movie? A West with the Night, Barrel Mark. And I said, how'd you know that? I said, really? If you want an Avro Avian and want to do a movie on... Huh. Uh, cool. Africa with that airplane, that's what it would be. Of course, that's a Bushmaster. That's the Kreutzer? Kreutzer. Kreutzer. America's first light molly into an airplane. Haywood Air Starters. Stays in the air. Almost stays in the air on one motor. Unbelievable. I mean, I remember when you got this out of Mexico. Yeah. I was looking at it, so... Greg and I swap back and forth on who gets what. <laughs> he beat me out of this one. This is, well, well, if you would have seen it, you wouldn't have wanted it. Yeah. This is a... Oh, you did a gorgeous job on it. Yeah, it's a, they did a wonderful job on this. Uh, let's go this way. Come and keep the minute. I want to show you the bathroom and hear your ass about. But you know that all these pilots on the side are sort of wonderful. This is the airplane Charles Lindbergh. This is the airplane Charles Lindbergh took his wife for her first airplane ride in. Oh, I'll be darned. Lindbergh, first man to fly west to east, has flown this airplane. Harry Brooks went to get him. The airplane came back from Mexico. Floyd Bennett and Burt Balkan. I'll uh, be darned, the huh? first man over the North Pole and the first man over the South Pole. Huh. Uh, uh, the Bremen crew crash landed on Greenlee Island and they said, we, somebody said, we need to rescue these guys. The first airplane that ever flew east to west is on Greenlee Island, wrecked. They made it, but they huh. didn't come back. Need to be rescued. Admiral Byrd, can we borrow your Ford? No, I'm getting ready for the Arctic, but you can borrow my pilots. Burnt Balkan and Floyd Bennett. On the way to rescue huh. the crew of the Bremen, Bennett died of pneumonia. I'll be damned. They, uh, because they used this airplane because uh, Ford loaned it to them because it had the long-range tanks on it, having returned from Mexico with uh, taking Charles Lindbergh's mother down there. I'll be darned. So anyhow, uh, so they flew back to New York to go to Bennett's funeral, carrying the crew of, of the Bremen, von Hunfeld, Fitzmorris, and Herman Cole, and they all took turns flying this, and, mm. and that's in, in the book about the, the, called the Bremen. Mm -hmm. And then the airplane was uh, flying in New York uh, over Niagara Falls. Amelia Earhart 
had an engine problem on her way to Buffalo to an air show, and they dispatched this airplane to pick her up, and she flew the airplane. Oh, that's pretty cool. Harold Gray, uh, first guy to pioneer flying boat flights across the Atlantic to London, and later president of Pan American, flew hmm. the airplane when it was going hmm. uh, flying over Niagara Falls. When I bought the airplane, I told my Canadian friends I had it, and they said, well, you're going to put it in Canadian livery, aren't you? And I said, why? I said, they said, well, it has whatever history it has in the United States has a greater history in Canada. Oh, really? Grant McConaughey, who became president of uh, Canadian Pacific Airways, picked the airplane up from Sir Harry Oakes, one of the richest men in the world in 1932, when he decided to get out of the flight scene business over Niagara Falls, flew it to Edmonton. Among other things, this was the first airplane to make a commercial flight over the Canadian Rockies. Cool. So the oh, first commercial awesome. flight in, uh, over the Canadian Rockies, yeah. coincidentally, into Vancouver. And there's just enough room for your name. <laughs> well, actually, Hillary Swank sat in that seat. Uh, oh, really? Uh, during the <laughs> filming of the movie Amelia. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, cool. But there you have it. The, the, the first, That's awesome. The first guy to fly west to east, the first air crew to fly east to west, the first man over the North Pole, the first man over the South Pole, hmm. and Amelia Earhart. Too cool. Pretty, pretty special. When it was flying over the falls in New York, I mean, uh, over Niagara Falls, this was painted on the side because it was a very historic plane. Really cool. Very clean. Little C3. You have the, you have the plane plane, don't you? Did I give that to you one time? Uh, Here, take it. Oh, we'll, cool. We'll light read it. All righty, thank you. I'm sure this is in your catalog. No. Actually, I, we, um, we uh, uh, print those for all the airplanes that go to shows. So all the pictures are on the wall of my airplanes, except for the one that's the one that looks like one of my airplanes. Mm -hmm. There there we are on the flight, uh, the Amelia flight recreation going over the uh, over Lake Mead. Huh. Here's your share. Did they have a blue fuselage at that time? Yep, or? yep, it was that exact color. Huh. This is, uh, you know who... Who, who, oh, that's awesome. I remember sitting in this last time I was here. Uh, it's the first airport show. Yep. T-A-T deal. No, a no? Ford. Henry really? Ford uh, built six of these to carry people from the first paved airport in the world huh. to the Henry Ford Museum. Uh, to the, not the Henry Ford Museum, to the uh, Dearborn Inn, the world's first airport hotel. So, first paved airport, first Airport hotel, first airport shuttle bus to carry people between the two. I'll be darn. Possibly United's oldest flying airplane, if if not maybe the second or third for sure, a 27 Stinson C3B uh, flown by Varney Airlines, which merged into United Airlines. It was one of the United Airlines. Hmm. That's a Fairchild F-45, uh, subject of a Supreme Court decision ordering the pre uh, release of rare airplane documents. Oh, airplane is, this the, is this the... It's a million dollar airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already yeah, spent yeah. a million on it, that's all I got. God dang. That's just a Traveler 6000. This was a small commuter type airplane early on, but this particular one was used to haul bat guana out of the bottom of the Grand Canyon up to the top of the Grand Canyon. Hmm. Shit. There we go. I always like this one. I always say, what do you think it's made of? Oh, it must be made of aluminum. No, it's steel. Stainless steel, that's awesome. And you know why they did this, don't you, Kermit? Was it just salt? No, there was no. There was a time. This is a transitionary airplane. There was a time uh, in the 30s when airplanes were going from fabric to aluminum, the DC-2, the DC-3, right. what have you. So uh, aluminum was all the rage. So that steel industry commissioned the design of an airplane to show the viability of stainless steel. I'll be done. And what better type of airplane to commission plane. than yeah, a seaplane? Yeah, absolutely. Because of coatings were bad. Yeah, the yeah. alloys weren't that great. And that's why it's built out of stainless. Of course, there are over a million, there are millions of spot welds. This is all monocoque construction. Yeah. There's no hmm. tubing in this airplane at all. Everything is just huh. um, welded in, uh, against the uh, uh, fairings and I mean uh, stringers in the back. 
The Kreutzer, a, a spy plane in, uh, owned by a German national Mexico, who used it to spy in the United States just before World War II, ended up spending the war in a jail in Mexico. Huh. Uh, smuggled um, booze in Seattle during the uh, uh, during uh, prohibition. Hauled gold out of the mine owned by the Mexican national who was spying on the U.S. Uh, flew for Navajo Airways briefly, who flew Fokker tri-motors. Guess what paint scheme they were in? Exactly this. So it was hmm. a feeder line for transcontinental air transport, Navajo Airways was. And they, just as they do today, painted the little feeder airplanes to match the big airplanes they were mating up with. So this hmm. is a paint scheme of the Fokker tri-motors for transcontinental air transport. Hmm. Of course, the, the Bushmaster, an attempt to resurrect the Ford uh, uh, tri-motor. this was like 60s? Uh, 50s. 50s? 50s and 60s. Uh, God, man, that was a tall tale. 5AT plus. Now, wh wasn't there one somebody crashed into a parking yes. lot? Yeah, that's the, the other one. The other one, but it's a, a mess. Yeah, it's uh, not salvageable, I don't know. Maybe the lowest time stairman in the world, uh, 117 hours plus whatever I put on it, which isn't much. All that aluminum is World War II aluminum. Hmm. I found it on a, stack of, uh, on a stack of airplanes that were just, you know, stacked up like cordwood out in California to be used as a duster, never did it, never made it. Hmm. Bought it right after the war, built right when the war was ending. Jimmy Manor, a friend of uh, Will Rogers, ran this airplane for WLS Radio and the Pure Oil Company. It's a WACO, it's always got a wild number of letters, which yeah. I don't know what they all are. The world's first diesel-powered airplane. I've decided to not to restore it because it's, it's kind of an artifact. I like things like this, Kermit, the, the uh, parking brake. Oh no, that is too cool. That's the piece parking of brake. No, it's a, just, oh, a piece it's of a leather, leather, leather strap. Little, little and strap. it's adjustable too, of course. Yeah. Um, all the inspect more damage occurred with the transfer of this airplane to me than occurred in its life. Uh, the the yo-yo threw it on the back of a truck and threw ropes over it hmm. and said, "Oh, he's going to restore it. I don't really care about it." And where did it come from? Uh, There's a Henry Ford Museum, and they had it on loan in the East Coast uh, to a museum, and they decided to de it. I've got you know, a funny story about that, but uh, I'll tell you later. But the interior is all original. Everything's original on the airplane. Except for the uh, uh, registration. Yeah. Look at the seatbelt, how you know, this goes. I don't have the pen that goes in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like World War yeah. One seatbelts. Yeah. That's cool. Carry over from all that. Call a ring. Worm in the dope. Huh. So the so the Germans didn't have World War One airplanes with diesel. I, I just seem like no, they they World War Two. They did have World yeah, War Two okay. airplanes. Though. Huh. Hey, one of the things I like about this. By the way, you know that a lot of these uh, diesel engines they build out 150 of them or some, put on things like walkers and stuff. They fall off the airplanes in flight. And of course, that wasn't good. They the, they have. Uh, you know, the, when these pistons fire, it's just so much force. Right. It, it shook the airplane apart, and they, these actually are rubber. They're rubber dampers, dampeners inside here. So huh. when the thing fired, they were trying to smooth out the, you know, the compression of it hmm. on the propeller. And uh, this, I just love these things. They want to take the fuel tank out. They just use those boot laces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The That's inspection all panels are, are zippers. World War One. Yeah, that's all. These inspection panels, they're, they're actually zippers sewn into the fabric. Yeah. Yeah, the, the lot of, well, not so much zippers, but the, the lacing was like that. But the zippers we've got on World War II airplanes. Huh. Stinson, uh, Stinson L1 uses well, Stinson, that for. There it is. Yeah. And these are the propellers that I've, I had read. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, had Made from scratch. And certificated. Awesome. Standard category, baby. Good for Two you. Two different power settings, low and high power. The smaller edges and bigger. Taylor Aero Charter. Yeah. 
So I'm seeing the exit sign there. So when are you open to the public? Uh, we have events in here. We open it for school. We've had uh, thousands of kids come through here every so year. Do you ever, uh, is it open to people come in and charge or is it by it's appointment? It's all free. No, it's just by appointment. Huh. We used to charge for uh, events and parties and we still do a few times a year if they're special, yeah. special events. Oh, the wings for the top of the, uh, the uh, keystone. It's oh, it's a loaning oh. Keystone, okay. Keystone loaning, yeah. K84. What it's going to look like. So nobody's got any uh, air yachts. No. Yeah, yeah, this still is way too cool. Too cool. Good for you. That is so cool. What I like is, is just the history of it. You know, Clayton Scott, uh, you know Clayton Scott, right? Hmm. He was a, a Boeing's chief pilot during World War II. He was personal pilot before that. Uh, a very famous Seattle aviator. He died at 103, but I was at his 100th birthday party. And he had told me the story about flying us down from Alaska. And I said, how'd you get a job with Boeing? He said, I was flying that commuter. He said, I landed next to an airplane, uh, pardon me, next to a boat called the Taconite, which was in the, the inland waterway. He said, I needed some fuel. He taxied up to the Taconite, and it was Bill Boeing's yacht. And Bill Boeing was on the, on the uh, boat. And uh, they got to know each other, and he ultimately hired him. Hmm. Well, at his 100th birthday party, I was sitting next to Bill Boeing Jr., who himself was in his late 70s, and I said, how'd you meet Clayton? He said, I was on my dad's yacht, and he taxied up in this funky-looking flying boat to get some gas from us. I said, well, you won't know where that flying boat is now? He said, I have no idea. I doubt if it's still around. I said, no, it's in my hangar. That is too <laughs> cool. That is just good for you. There's Clayton Scott up there, and his mechanic. Clayton's on the left mechanic on the right. Cool. Promise me in your will you'll give me first ride or a fuse <laughs> along this, okay? Okay. There's a flight in the back right here. Uh, you have a yeah, I got to go do that. That's too much fun. There you go. Yeah, Stu, you, Harrison. I don't know the other guys. So what are these wings off of? Uh, those are for the commuter. Oh, awesome. Remember, it's a biplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is too cool. That is too cool. Did you, uh, oh, that's right. You said you found the drawings for it. How complete are they? Very. Really? So at I first, could build one if I had to. At first, I didn't yeah. think they were. Yeah. But now they are. Uh, Cunningham Home Motor Company built, uh, built uh, horse buggies and then built cars and gave, gave airplanes a shot in the 30s, World War II broke out, and they stopped. This one was left in the factory and uh, built right after World War II ended. Hmm. It's like a freighter. Load from the top. Kerwin, this is interesting how much capacity this thing has. And, and to get big loads in, you could open the top here, but then this. Oh, pop, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. This pops out. This not only opens, right. but this post is removed. So huh. you have a, quite a. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. What's it powered by? 985. So it's got a lot of power. A lot of lift with the two wings. Yeah. Right. I can't remember that. L something or other. Cloudboy is what they're known as, but it's a... Stearman, yeah, yeah. YPT-9. Yeah. I'd seen those before. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the C-3B over there, the blue one. Then it was this one. Then it was that one. <laughs> I got this from Gene Frank, and we had it all restored. We we're putting the Park Service livery on it, mm -hmm. okay? I used to work for the Park Service. I found out it was the Park Service's first airplane. I loaned it to the Park Service every year for Oshkosh. It was at Mateo for a year during the Centennial flight, all that. But I found something out after I had painted it. It was also NACA's first airplane. Oh, I'll be done. That was the first airplane NACA ever owned. Prior to this airplane, huh. uh, they used, uh, they got loaners from the Army, World War I stuff, huh. and they decided to buy their own airplane. Eventually it became NASA. Eventually became NASA, so I call this the predecessor to the space shuttle. That's right, it is. So, uh, and, and, and when NACA was done with it, they gave it to the Park Service. And when the Park Service was done with it, they gave it to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. So. Oh, 
Unbelievable. God, that is such a funky looking front end. It's a single pilot cockpit, but here, here it is in the, uh, these, uh, there it is with the, the knack of colors. I found the, the, hmm. the illustration later. And here it is in 1928 in Mantio. Hmm. Pretty cool. So we've got the uh, World War II trainers. Yeah. And I love telling the story. I ask people, what's the difference? Well, they can tell the canopies for the Canadians. Yeah. They can tell the motor if they look at the Continental in this one because they couldn't make enough. 26 and 23. Yeah. But why is that one silver and why is that one blue and yellow and red stripes and white stripes? One's and Army and one's Navy. No. No? Before the war, when the war was just warming up, they had this airplane. When the war got going, they had that airplane. They didn't have time to mess around putting all these fancy paint schemes together, taping off the tail with the red and white. And they all needed that. airplanes. They needed airplanes. They just shot silver on it and Left shoved it. it out the door. So huh. you know that this airplane was built before the war really got going. Oh, okay. Huh. That's interesting. This is an interesting airplane. This airplane was another of the packed diesel airplanes. And uh, it, it flew to California, then it flew to uh, Argentina. And when we got this airplane, it was a basket case, but we took the paint off the metal pieces, and there was that logo underneath it, the Packard diesel aircraft logo. And we found out that, in fact, it did have a diesel engine on it. That's not what is on it now. When mm -hmm. it went to Argentina, Aeropostal owned it, and they put a gasoline engine on it, hmm. uh, J6, I think. So Aeropostale flew the mail from Buenos Aires to Patagonia. And in the 30s, there was an ecclesiastical congress uh, in Argentina, and one of the cardinals took a ride in this airplane and subsequently was elected pope. So the first pope to fly flew in this airplane. I'll be darned. Albeit before he was pope. Have you seen the interior of this? It's pretty cool. God, I love these little stub wings. This makes it a sesquiplane. sesquiplane yeah. No yeah. lift only structure. It's not a sesquiplane because it's got a it's got a V spar, doesn't it? No, I think it's a sesquiplane. That's what they all say. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, take a look inside this. Uh, we took we found just a little piece of this fabric in the wing root when we brought it back, and I had it rewoven. So this is absolutely correct fabric. Oh my God. And the. Controls are World War One controls that uh, Air France and Aeropostal put in the airplane when it was in Buenos Aires. It's got a, a Tampier, uh, it's got a throttle off a rotary engine. Yep, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. You yeah. know, you're talking about more than I do. Yeah. That's absolutely what the interior was right down to the, to the uh, paper clip up on the dash. I'll be darn too cool. Huh. Awesome. All right. All righty. We are off now, now the, to the, dinner. The, the lights are up about when it's time to leave. Yeah, okay. That's awesome. <laughs> We're out of here. Leave it just as we found it. <laughs> I forgot about that damn snow.